All right, everyone, with that, I'd like to introduce Brian Caprice from Keep Trading Simple to take us through parabolic retracement moves. Brian, it's all you. Todd, it's only 202. I have no idea what to do with it. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Normally, I start much later than this. So, um, uh, yeah, so welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm pretty excited to kind of share what we're going to go through today. Um, as Todd and I joked around about, we do a morning session every day uh, on basically uh, on YouTube, on Natix's YouTube page from 8.45 to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And a lot of what we talk about and a lot of the setups that we see, uh, typically it's before news, so it's kind of cool that Chris Vecchio is doing something after this. Um, this is a strategy that I like to use. Uh, it's meant for all traders. Uh, so if you are absolutely brand new, this is something that you could try to incorporate right away. Uh, I don't know how many of you out there do not have demo accounts yet, um, but the best way to practice anything that you guys do today is to go open a demo account. Uh, I'm not a Nadex employee. Um, I'm just a, a person that works with Nadex because I really believe in their products and I think it's something that it's great for all traders to have. So this is a non Nadex person telling you if you don't have a demo, please go get signed up for one. Um, it doesn't make sense for you guys to spend all day here watching these presentations, saying how great they are, and then never taking an actual, you know, some type of an action step forward. Uh, if you don't have a demo, the first action step is get a demo account so you guys can start trading. Um, and this is a strategy that you guys should be able to incorporate in, um, understand, and this is going to be kind of my caveat to the whole thing. Uh, I do have a much longer course that kind of breaks this down even more if you feel like you need more about it. Um, today, it's, it's meant to give you guys the conceptual idea, but in 40 minutes, 45 minutes, it's very hard to teach you everything you absolutely need to know. Uh, and I always just want to make sure everybody's on the same page on that one. So this will give you the principles. And again, you could you know use what I'm teaching you today to craft it for your own, practice it, do whatever you want, but you got to have an account. And again, if you've never traded this, even if you do have a fully funded account, please go over, try it and demo first. Um, I'm here to you know kind of broaden your horizons broaden the way that you look at things. Um, I don't want anybody to email me and be like, hey, I tried that thing the next day and I got it wrong. It's like, okay, did you have all the strategy? And a lot of times the answer is no. Um, so it's called parabolic retracements when out of the money makes sense. Um, for those of you that don't know me, um, a lot of you, I mean, I feel like at this point, a lot of you do. Um, well, maybe, I don't know. We have a lot of people today. So I, I, I'll do our, our standard kind of intro just so you guys uh, you know, really get who I am. Uh, I do get emails on a regular basis from a lot of people although we do have a lot of people on today. So uh, before we begin, let me make sure I can check all my boxes. Let me cover the Nadex risk disclaimer. You've probably heard it a few times today, but this will be for my session and you know, because I know they divide the recordings up. Uh, first off, trading on Nadex involves financial risk. It may not be appropriate for all investors. The information presented here in this inf is for informational and education purposes only and should not be considered an offer, solicitation to buy or sell any financial instrument on Nadex or elsewhere. Now, any trading decisions that you make are solely your responsibility. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results, and Nadex contracts are based on underlying asset classes, including Forex, which is very important to understand uh, for today's presentation, stock index futures, and commodity futures. Now, trading can be volatile when investors risk losing the cost of, of, of their investment on any given transaction, uh, and that is with including fees. Um, but the one nice thing about Nadex is the design of Nadex contract ensures that investors cannot lose more than the cost of another transaction. Uh, Nadex is subject to US regulatory oversight by the CFTC. All right, now that that's out of the way, here's just the standard one. You guys have seen this before. This is for my corporation as well. Uh, it basically says the same information. I'm gonna save you guys all the, the legalese. I'm not gonna read through it. Um, but for the most part, uh, the biggest thing I want you to take from this is the fact that you should not be trading with uh, capital that is uh, you know, meant for mortgages, car payments, food, those kinds of things. Um, be, you know, be aware that anytime you step into the market, there is risk. Uh, without risk, there is no reward. Um, so again, don't trade with money you can't afford to lose. So for those of you that don't know me, all right, I am an East Coaster. I do talk quicker than Todd. Uh, I am in the time zone where that is the actual most important one. I know you guys in the Central and Chicago feel that Chicago is where, you know, the, the, the U.S. trading session revolves around. I do not live in New York City, but I have worked in New York City right down the street from the stock exchange. I used to walk past it every day to work. Uh, I run a company called Keep Trading Simple, and uh, what I try to do is I try to simplify trading. Uh, I've been doing this since really late 1999. You guys remember Y2K? Uh, back then, I'm not going to age myself and say how many years, but it's been a while. Um, I am not a 12th generation trader. Uh, my grandfather's 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 grandfather did not open the exchanges. Uh, I started pretty much like all of you out there, right? I started by a person that was really interested in the market, the opportunity it provides for myself. and 
I did a lot of wrong things. Uh, I, you know, back then we didn't have the internet. Uh, I went a lot, I went to a lot of seminars. I bought a lot of books, a lot of books that were kind of not <laughs> relevant to what was happening at that time. Um, started with traditional stocks and options. I uh, found out very, very fast that I didn't necessarily have the capital for it. Um, I was trying to acquire the knowledge and the time was a little bit hard for me. Um, after a few years, I ended up finding the currency market and loved it because the idea of leverage was so great uh, for me, as well as I love the 24 hour nature of it. Uh, spent a number of years doing that, uh, ended up working for a corporation, teaching people how to trade the markets. Uh, went inside, I figured, you know, my next natural evolution from becoming a trader on the outside would be to become a trader on the inside, working for one of the, you know, one of the three big banks. Um, went in there, realized it really wasn't what I thought it was, but it was a great experience for me because I learned another side of the market, bonds in particular, that I, I had absolutely no idea about. And I, I would say with a lot of confidence, most retail traders out there have absolutely no idea about the bond market whatsoever. So it was a great learning experience for me, but I realized very, very fast that everything that I thought I would be doing in that industry was wrong. So very, very fast, I decided that's it. I'm gonna just go teach people to do it themselves. It was much easier. Um, I, I liked it. It was much more fulfilling for me to teach people. Uh, I've tried around the US and Canada. And um, you know, again, it's been quite an experience. I've been doing and kind of, for lack of a better word, partnered with Nadex for the last, I think, three years now, almost three, four years, maybe almost. Um, writing articles, you know, giving presentations at education summits. Uh, as I said, Todd and I have a, a morning show now that I think is absolutely just a blast to be a part of. Um, and it's been it's been great fun for traders. And the feedback we've gotten so far has been awesome. So if you haven't watched it again, this is not a self plug. Go to YouTube, search Nadex. Click follow and hit the notification icon whenever we go live. And again, we talk about, you know, basically the hottest setups of the morning every single day. So it's a great experience for both experience and uh, new traders. And that is my little one. She's not actually that little anymore. Um, she just turned three. So her hair is twice, you know, basically half the size of her body. You may hear her run in here a little bit. She uh, wants to know what daddy's doing without her. Uh, definitely daddy's little girl. And I got another little one on the way and, and two 11 year olds. So. Um, that's me kind of in a nutshell, so you know where I'm coming from. Uh, just so you guys know, too, I'm not really going to show a ton of charts today. Um, a lot of my analysis and, and the systems and things that I've created are more based off of price action. I'm not a big indicator trader. Uh, I don't believe in them. I know why people use them. Um, I know how to exploit them. Um, there is no such thing as the perfect indicator or the one that works the best. Uh, it's really, the market will do whatever the market wants to do. So just keep that in mind today. Uh, when we do talk about some of the charts and some of the moves and things like that that, that exist in the market. Um, this strategy, it uses very, very, very few uh, indicators, if, if any at all. Uh, there is one that you do need, and I will go through it at that time, uh, and I'll give you guys the parameters. It's nothing fancy. It's pretty much, I've yet to find a charting platform that does not have it. Um, again, I try to keep this as simple as possible, and it's, you know, it's something that all traders can actually trade, okay? So let's go in. Uh, let's see. This is what our webinar is going to be covering today. Uh, we're going to cover basically what is a parabolic move. Some of you, it, it does sound like a very catchy term, like parabolic. Ooh, what is what is that? I don't know what that is. Is there an indicator? Um, there actually is an indicator with parabolic in there, um, but it has nothing to do with you know technically what this is about. Uh, we're going to talk about you know again, it's called parabolic retracements. We're going to talk about why you would trade the retracement, right? Uh, some people say, well, why don't we just do it first, right? And, and we'll cover that. Uh, then I'll talk about when they can be traded. Like when is the ideal opportunity to use these? Um, which assets can you use to trade them with? And again, I'll break it down a little bit. Uh, and I'll kind of give my pros and cons of, of the, the different asset classes, um, both within within Nadex and then the actual tradable asset classes themselves. And then also why you would choose an out of the money contract for these. Now, again, this is kind of diving a little bit further. Hopefully we have enough time on that one. Uh, I don't want to get cut short, but I would say that is probably the biggest benefit for me talking fast is it's very rare that one, I ever run over on a session, but two, that I don't get everything in. So it works out pretty well. All right. Um, I do have the question window up. So if there is questions, you guys are more than welcome to answer them. If I see them, I'll do my best to cover them. Typically, once I'm done or in a pause stage, I'll look up every so often. So if you do, if you do ask a question and it goes unanswered, don't fret. It, I just haven't seen it yet. I'm not ignoring anybody out there. Um, I am a believer that there's no such thing as a stupid question. Um, so again, if you don't know, 
answer it or you know ask it and most times uh, the not um, Todd or one of the other Nadex representatives out there can answer it for you uh, but if not they'll draw attention to it and I'll do my best that you know again everybody gets something really beneficial out of today's session okay <laughs> thank you Jermaine yes she is a cutie she knows it she gets anything she wants she asked me for a bunny yesterday and um yeah She's like, Daddy, I want a bunny. I want a bunny. So guess who was on Craigslist uh, looking for bunnies last night? Yeah, this guy. This guy. <laughs> yeah. Any, anything she wants, she gets, um, unfortunately. All right. So parabolic move. Okay. The best way to think about what a parabolic move is. All right. If you can't grasp this slide or if anybody comes in late after this one, they're going to be confused. All right. So the best way, and again, this is kind of the layman's term. This is not the official. I'll show you that next. But the layman's term for a parabolic move is what the heck just happened, okay? If you're looking at a chart, and most people that have been looking at charts for a while, they'll be sitting there watching it, and all of a sudden, a candle takes off. It goes up. It goes down. And you're literally going, what did I just miss? What what, what happened? Did, did we get invaded? Or, you know, what, what happened here? Um, that is what a parabolic move is. So it's nothing fancy. It's There's no major definition. And, and you know, to give you a, a true definition, because I know some people like the, the, the big drawn off thing, so there's no confusion. A parabolic move in an explosive one directional move in an asset that is exponentially, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, exponentially greater than the average move during that time frame. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. I get this question all the time. They're like, oh, well, how, well, how do I know it's you know exponential? Okay, well, it depends what time frame you're looking at. So this is not just a move that is designed for a five-minute chart or a 30-minute chart or an hourly chart or a four-hour chart or a daily chart. The way that I trade all my strategies, it doesn't matter what time frame I'm looking at, but I wanted to make sure that I added it to the description. Okay, it doesn't matter. A chart is a chart is a chart. The strategies work. And if anybody ever tells you that they have a strategy, but it only works on this time frame, it's not an actual viable strategy. Okay. It's got to work on everything because a chart is a chart is a chart. Okay. It will just take longer to unfold. All right. So I'll read it again. An explosive one directional move in an asset that is exponentially greater than the average move during that time frame. It'll often look like panic buying or selling, as most times associated with a major event like earnings or news releases. Okay. For those of you that have heard me speak in the past, you guys know I absolutely love news trading. I love it. It's my favorite. Uh, it's just one of those things. News doesn't change the direction of the market, but it does provide a catalyst. Okay. Um, the market is kind of like a, a battle between good and evil. And I say good and evil because like we're the good guys and like the big money, the hedge funds, the banks, the institutions, the inside traders, they're like the evil empire, right? They will typically move the market wherever they feel like it doesn't matter what the, what the news is. All right. But things like, and again, panic buying, panic selling, Earnings, economic news reports, um, news headlines, um, Twitter, these are all things that provide parabolic moves. Now, typically they are gut reactions to what's happening in the market. The market needs to immediately adjust. The buyer or seller will jump in there and will try to catch it. Um, all of these are parabolic moves. Okay. Now, remember, I am not looking to trade the move because I don't most times know when it's going to happen. I don't have a crystal ball, neither does anybody else in this world, okay? We don't actually know what's going to happen. Again, what you're doing is you're preying on other people's irrational fears, right? The panic buying and panic selling. Now, here's two different examples, and I try to mix these up. Um, I've done this parts of this presentation before, and I, I wanted to make sure that I got updated charts, and these are both pretty recent. You guys can see where you know oil prices is, but on the left-hand side, we have the ES, all right? You can see out here, we had an immediate run up. And again, this was right after kind of the open. Um, it is associated uh, with an actual news release. And you can see the price jumped up just over, uh, it went from around 1476. I don't know if you guys can see. I know that the sharing is kind of weird if you can see my cursor or not. I can't tell, but between the nine and the 12, you can see that we had this little pullback and then all of a sudden, right around that 10, 10, 30 time period, the price shot up. And again, was it a little move? Not so much, right? Over 25 points. Most futures traders out there, right? Most people I know that are, are day traders, right? Futures traders, they're looking to get a couple points every day. They got nice size accounts. They're looking for a few points here and there, right? I'll grab $50 here, $50 there, $50 there per contract. And it adds up pretty fast, right? This is a 25 point move almost instantaneously, right? Well, 
I didn't know that, you know, nobody knew that that was going to happen. They, nobody knows that it's going to move 25 pips or 25 points that fast, right? But you see what happened in the, in, 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 you know, afterwards, right? It leveled out. It made kind of a little bit of a, a push higher, a little bit of a failure mark. And what did it do? It rolled and went all the way back. Whoops. It went all the way back to the origin of the move in short order, right? In less than 24 hours. Roll over across to the oil chart, okay? Now, that was a 15-minute chart over there. This is This is a five-minute chart. You can see this one did the same exact thing. All of a sudden, large drop in price, okay? And it went from, what, $70.20 all the way down to $68.60, right? That was $1.50, over $1.50 worth of movement in less than 10 minutes. I'll tell you right now, had you been a futures trader there, and if you were long, you just lost a whole lot of money really, 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 really fast, okay? If you guys have never traded the oil market in futures, money is blown up or made very, very fast in that market. A lot of people still call it the wild, wild west, and for good reason, okay? This thing dropped all the way down, ended up hitting a level, which is for me, is called a buying area, right? And it ended up retracing. Now, it took about, eh, about an hour, kind of an hour and a half to retrace fully, and you would think, wait a second, I mean, if it's dropping that much, it must have been absolutely horrible news, right? We should sell it. And that's really kind of what the human body tells us, is we should be selling after a large drop in price. And that's a lot of people out there will agree that those are the two biggest mistakes that retail traders get into, is they buy after a large run-up in price, or they sell after a big drop in price. Well, this was a situation, this thing dropped, and you should have been trying to buy the heck out of it, right? To play what's called a parabolic retracement. Now. A lot of people will say, wait a second, you said you love news. You know when these releases are. Couldn't I just play the news, right? Right? I mean, I always get that one too. Why not just trade the news? And that is an absolutely wonderful question. I'm glad that you asked it. I'm glad that you thought about it, right? Well, here's why. Do I have, and again, I'll, I'll phrase in a couple questions here. Do I have a strategy that I could trade before news? And the answer is absolutely yes. I love news trading, guys. I just said that. I have definitely uh, multiples, right? And again, it's based off of risks versus of reward and, and, and a couple, you know, again, I have a couple different strategies and a couple different ways that I look at those things. But the big question is why trade the retracement? And here's why. Okay, one, it provides another hour for me in my quiver, right? I do have a news-based strategy. But if I can get one trade out of it, why would I want to stop taking the easier trade? And when I say easier, in my eyes, when we see a parabolic move, emotions get in there. And typically emotions is what costs you money inside of the markets. If you are new to this or if you are risk averse, again, new strategies prior to the news release are riskier than the retracement. Okay. And the reason why is it could be a miss. And again, there are ways to look to see how often things are going to miss. But the reality is, it could come in exactly as expected. There could be absolutely zero movement. And at that point, almost 99% of news-based trading strategies are going to fail if it comes in. Now, if we get the actual spike in price, I know what the triggers are that I'm looking for for the reversal, but most times are not. The reason why it bursts is because the market was surprised. The market adjusts. And when I say the market, I'm really talking about the retail traders out there because they're the ones that are giving money up to the professionals. Oh my God, that that Apple new that, that the earnings on Apple were amazing. I should be buying it right now, but it's already burst forward, right? The reason why it burst forward up in the air is because somebody out there is trying to figure out how the heck can I short this? How can I take advantage of the layperson out there that just figured it out that it was good earnings that didn't know ahead of time, right? Because think about it. I mean, ask yourself this: Have you ever been in a situation? And again, I don't know how you know with with the um the education level is out here for people or kind of the experience level, but have you ever bought anything and then watched it like literally as soon as you got filled in a trade, it went against you? And you were like, how does the market know? And like the frustration level just, it, it, it bottles up in people, right? I mean, it just, it just like overflows. How does the market know? Every single time I buy, it goes down. The reason why is because the professionals, the big money out there, they know exactly what it takes to, per, you know, to push people's buttons, right? Retail at-home traders, we trade with emotion. By using a retracement, right? By taking advantage of this, most of the emotions are already out of the trade. It's spiked, great, check the box, there's one thing. 
right? All the retail traders now are trying to jump in and get into this thing. But what you need to do is you want to trade with the professional. You want to trade with the big money. Remember, after you make a lot of money, and again, this is just a standard step, right? And again, this is hypothetical. If you get into a trade and you make money, what is the next step? Is it to hold it till it goes back against you and you lose all the money you made? No, the next step is to take your profit. Well, guess what? Big money agrees. If you buy low, what's the next step? You sell high. You don't buy high, right? Because if you buy high, guess what's going to happen? <laughs> You're going to sell when it goes back down again. So why don't you trade with the professionals and you know the big money out there? As they're taking profit, you're getting into the trade the same time by handling the retracement. And it's not just going up. It's also going down in the other direction. Remember, if price goes down very, very fast, a lot of people are getting really, really crazy. They're getting nervous. Oh, my God, it's going down. I'm losing money left and right. The VIX is spiking. We got to sell. Right. That's when you should be buying. Because, again, remember what the rule is, right? Buy low, sell high, and vice versa. Sell high and buy low. Right? So that's why we do the retracement. What it does is it it takes a lot of the emotional kind of gut-wrenching feelings out of news. It takes the uncertainty out of it. It, give us, it gives us a rule-based strategy to trade it. And then again, if you go back and look at these in charts, you'll see this happens all the time. Really? Has anything really changed because of one economic news release number? And the answer is no. Hopefully that's not shocking for anybody out there, but that's the reality of it. Okay. Um, now, where do you find news and how do you know what's going to move and what's not? Now, this is just an example. This is old. I didn't change this slide because, it, again, it was framed pretty nice, but I could literally pull this up any day of the week. I could literally pull it up right now and we could do the next 10 days in a row. It's the same thing. Okay. If you guys have not been to news based sites, it's very important. I don't care if you trade this strategy or you don't trade this strategy or after Chris, you're going to become a pre news trader versus a post news trader. It doesn't matter. Okay. If you are in the markets, you need to know when all the economic news releases are, okay? I'll break it down. All sites use the same thing. This is Daily FX. You guys have seen me use Forex Factory in the past. They all rank news releases with level of importance from low, medium, to high, okay? Obviously, the high ones tend to have the largest parabolic spikes, okay? Now, inside of that, different countries have, the, have different power as well. The United States being you know, one of the largest economies in the world, it tends to have the most power followed by the euro, followed by the pound, followed by the Aussie. Again, China is not one of the main currencies we trade, but again, their news releases affect a lot of the market as well because again, the size of their markets. Now, you may say, how often am I able to trade this? All right, so this is just a, a little example right here, right? On this sheet, you can see that there was no forecast given of these, what, five news releases. And again, this is June 17th, of la June 7th of last year. You can see one, right? The unemployment rate came in at 3.6 and it was expected, right? The forecast for non-farm payroll was off. The CAD unemployment rate was off by a lot. CAD employment change was off by a lot, right? I'll give an example, oil, right? Oil, they are the, the forecast is typically right once, maybe twice in an entire year. And there is an oil inventory report every single week. Okay. And in fact, there is actually two oil inventory reports. There's one that comes out typically, again, they, with when there's holidays on Monday or Tuesday, um, they get pushed back. But there are two, right? There's an industry-specific one, right? Um, the API report, they will have a forecast for the market and then a release, right? A forecast versus an actual, and it's pretty much never right. And then we have the government-sponsored one, which again, we're talking about the same exact inventory and the forecasts were typically pretty close and their actual is also typically off. So it's kind of, a, it's the same data, but yet everybody has different numbers out there. And what happens is these provide big spikes up or down, okay? If you're unfamiliar with how much news there is, go out there after today's presentation, go to Daily FX, go search economic calendars, go and click and, and just, again, there can be a lot of them. It can be overwhelming if you're new. Just go to the highest important ones and you will see there's a list of, and you can set alerts. You can do all kinds of stuff. There's just, there's just so much out there. All right. One of the questions I get asked a lot of times too, and this is a little trick that I have. I actually have like an alert, right? I have an alert when something moves way too much. When a, basically a parabolic move happens, I get alerted. I get an email sent to my phone. You're able to go out there and find these news releases. If you don't feel like spending the entire day waiting for an opportunity, you were able to look at this the night before, the week before, the month before. You can figure out when all these releases are, and you could actually 
schedule yourself of when you're going to be in front of the computer, knowing that most, and I don't have an actual percentage, I can't say like 90% of the movement comes within 30 minutes of a news release. But I will say, in a majority of the cases, when you have major news releases like this, a parabolic, a parabolic move happens that leads us into a parabolic retracement trade. Okay. Now, this is just so everybody always understands here. This parabolic retracement strategy is not. I mean, this does. This is not rocket science. Like I, this is not like I have not you know decoded like the the entire you know DNA sequence of you know whatever. Right. It's one of those things, once you guys understand this, and again, I'm teaching it to on a conceptual basis today, you're going to see this everywhere. And it's all over the place. I mean, it's literally everywhere, right? And all it does is it plays on the fear and greed of the actual retail investor, all right? Now, when can these be traded? And again, I said, find out news. Now, because we are in a global economy, okay, we do have to talk about Forex hours, all right? Now, I'm not saying you have to trade currencies. You can do this with, you know, the indices. You can trade it with commodity futures if you want. It's, I mean, I, I'll tell you what's easiest if you guys want the easiest, um, meaning not easiest and easiest to make money, but easiest is in there's the most opportunity, right? It's going to be over in the currency market because it's a 24-hour market. You don't have the closures there. It basically opens Sunday night and ends Friday night. It doesn't close, right? Native Forex hours, okay? So there are a number of different, quote, sessions around the globe. Okay, you may say, how does the market open on Sunday night? Well, our Sunday night is Sydney and Tokyo's morning on Monday, right? And the reason it closes Friday night is because, again, we roll into the weekend and it hasn't started back over again, all right? As you can see, eight to five is the typical, what's considered the US market hours. Tokyo is right afterwards from seven to four, right? There's a little bit of an overlap with the London session. Sydney's from five to two, and then London is considered the major one from three to 12. Now, it's very, very easy. I'm not telling you you need to be a vampire. I'm not telling you you need to stay up 24 hours a day, right? The session overlaps, this piece down here at the bottom, right? And again, I don't know if you can see the hour moving around or not. Most, and I say most, I mean like 95% of your major news releases are gonna occur between eight and 12, right? Eastern Standard Time. And again, that's when we had the New York and London session open. That's when the most trading volume occurs, occurs, but also in that three to four o'clock window in the morning, right? And that's the London and Tokyo kind of overlap. The reason why the London one moves the most is because that's when the trading day is considered started, right? Now, you see that Sydney and Tokyo are up there as well, all right? Yeah, there's a little bit of an overlap in there. And you may say, okay, well, I don't want to wake up in the middle of the night and I have a job, so I, I can't, you know, I can't do that morning thing. Is there any other time that I can do this? Is this for me? The answer is absolutely yes. Guess when, and again, you should be able to figure this out. Guess when Sydney's main news releases are between 9 and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the United States. 9 p.m. at night. Yep, I'm telling you, you can trade at 9 p.m. at night. Absolutely. The European news session is actually my favorite session to trade. Uh, the reason why is because, again, is there a lot of volatility baked into the market? Are the spreads wide at that time? And the answer is no. So you can play whether a pre-news move or a post. A lot of times what I will do is I will set a pre-news move up for the Australian news releases. And then if there is a miss, which there tends to be on a lot, right, you'll see a spike in one of two directions. And then what it does is it sets up for me an overnight parabolic retracement trade. Okay, and you have a couple different options you want to take those off. You can take them off at the 3 a.m. binary strikes. You could do it at the 7 a.m. So that way you could avoid the new session switches. Or you could just use the regular daily contracts and end at 3 the next day. So a lot of different options to be able to trade them. Okay. Now, which assets could you trade a retracement with? Right. Uh, first things first, obviously, I just mentioned the Forex market. There are so many economic news releases in the Forex market. Um, Again, we are a global economy. You're seeing European data, you're seeing pound data, you're seeing Chinese data, right? You're seeing Australian data, New Zealand data. Um, there's just so much stuff out there. And even, and it's not just all against the dollar as well, right? I mean, things like the Euro pound, like think about what, what major kind of geopolitical, right? Things that we had lately in the last couple of years. Brexit, what was Brexit? Brexit was a fight between the European Union and the UK, right? Great Britain. 
there were so many parabolic retracements moved because somebody would make a headline, it would pop. And then the other side would say something else, it would go right back again. And then somebody else would say something again, it would go right back up again. And then vice versa, somebody else would say something and it would drop right back to the downside. Most traders are like, that's ridiculous. You can't trade that. That's whipsaw. It's back and forth. Yeah, for the un, you know, the uneducated, yeah, you're absolutely right. It is whipsaw. It's going back and forth. But if you know where these things are going to transfer, you know, change, anytime you see these spikes, and if you say, hey, listen, this is exponentially higher than what it should be, <laughs> it's going to bounce back in there. And it did. There were so many channels back and forth where it would spike to the top, spike to the bottom, spike to the top, spike to the bottom, spike to the top. So again, you may or may not be a Forex trader, and I don't really, it doesn't really matter. It's just, if you want the easy opportunities, there is a ton of them over in the currency market, okay? Now, what about the indices? All right, let's think about this. What type of news releases or what type of opportunity exists out there? Can you trade, you know, the, you know, the ES? Sure, yeah. Could you trade the YM, the Dow? Yeah, yeah. NASDAQ, could you trade that one? Sure, sure. Um, at Nadex, could you trade foreign markets as well? Has anybody out there looked at Nadex and said, hey, listen, you know, is there other markets there that I could trade just besides, uh, you know, besides just US markets? And if you go over indices, you'll see a couple other ones. There's a China 50, then there's a FTSE 100, there's a Germany 30, there's a Japan 225. So it's not just US 500, small cap, tech, and Wall Street, right? There are many other things, other countries to trade as well. And you think about it, and this is kind of like a hidden gem here, right? Do you think there's a whole lot of US traders trading those things out there? Could there be some good opportunity out there because it's kind of like a hidden gem that nobody looks at? Yeah, absolutely, right? So you can absolutely trade it because a market is a market is a market, a chart is a chart is a chart. So indices are another one of those ones out there that provide great opportunity, all right? Now, last but not least, bum, 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 commodities. By commodities, I'm most times I'm talking about gold, oil and i know those are kind of commodities but kind of just inflation hedges and they are you know they are technically industrial metals right but things like oil they happen all this happens all the time natural gas i don't know if anybody's looked at natural gas lately um <laughs> natural gas has been i don't even i don't even know if this is like a technical term right i don't know if anybody has a chart up right now but i mean if you look at natural gas Natural gas is spiky all over the place. It's just the chart. It trades the same exact way, but there are so many spikes up and then a rollover spike back down again, then a spike up and then a rollover back down again. There's parabolic retracements all over the place. Commodities offer, and put it this way, I, you know, in, in trading, people tend to be, or the way, there's two camps, right? When you're thinking globally, there are two camps. You are a Forex trader or you are a futures trader. I love the futures trader that trade currency futures and like, nah, nah, that's future. No, it's the, it's, I'm sorry. It's actually the currency market. But if you want to trade through futures, sure, handicap yourself. I will tell you this for those future traders out there. If you want to put yourself a lot at risk, trade commodities there. But if you want to learn how to trade commodities, Nadex provides an, an environment that is a whole lot less protective in nature than the money that you need to put out there. This is one of those strategies. If you want to learn to trade oil, go do it in a safer environment. This is a great way to do it. Natural gas, you haven't looked at it? Great. Start looking at it. There's an oil, there's a, a natural gas inventory every Thursday afternoon. It trades the same exact way. Could you trade gold? Sure. Could you trade silver? Yeah. Same environment, right? If you go over in the binary realms, what else do you have? You have um, actually, I guess there used to be more there, but there's not as many. And again, it's later in the afternoon, so a lot of these are closed. But you know, you have commodities out there. There's other things we can trade as well. All right. A lot of different things. Now, of these three ranking opportunities, I would say Forex provides the most opportunity out there. So that would be, I'd say, again, quote, the easiest to find these setups. After that, I would say probably commodities would be the next one, although the, you got to watch the contracts out a little bit more just because they're very, very spiky because not everybody trades futures. Right. I would say that oil, natural gas and probably. Right now, probably silver, right? Probably gives a lot of opportunity. Uh, the indices do it as well, but typically takes a little bit longer time. So a lot of people see these and like, oh, are they going to be done in an hour? Nah, sometimes they take a little bit longer. So you have to use, make sure that you're using kind of the right vehicle for them. Of the, th of the three, I would say Forex is, commodities is probably the fastest unfolding trade, followed by Forex, followed by the indices. All right, so again, time with, you know, any type of option, right, is one of those things you need to watch out for. But that's probably the order that you need to focus on these, um, you know, in that order. Now, 
I mentioned in the beginning, let's talk about, oh, I told you guys I would give you guys the exponential piece of it, all right? Here's the definition of the exponential. Um, I don't have a slide for it. Um, I've done presentations on it. And if you guys don't know where the presentations are, if you go into the Natix website, and I, I believe if you go under education and archives, there's a drop down for people that have done them. Um, I, I don't know if there's a life cycle there or not, how long they stay up there. And, and I don't know, maybe Todd can jump in at the end and, and, and explain that one. I did a presentation on ATR and how to use ATR and why I believe that ATR is literally the number one most underutilized and most important of all, I mean, quote, indicators that exist. Um, the exponential definition will be one and a half times that period's ATR, okay? Now, again, do you have to tweak that for different currencies and different indices and things like that? Yes, but as a general rule, if something more, moves more than one and a half times its period ATR, that can be considered a major move, okay? Now, again, like I said, there are some caveats to that, but that's what I'm gonna use for the, the, the move. Now, you may say, why am I using out-of-the-money contracts? And again, the ATR exponential piece of that rolls over into this out-of-the-money piece of it, all right? Um, pretty simple risk, okay? For those of you that know me, and again, I like this slide. I, I added this. I added a couple things to this one. You may look at the top and the bottom and say, whoa, what the heck is that? That's the old platform, and I loved it the way that it laid it out. It's very, very simple, and again, it's it's great for teaching. Then on the right and the left of this one, you can see that I've used kind of the new format. Not my favorite thing, but I got outvoted as far as, you know, you know again, if you're a red, green color, if you're a red, blue colorblind, <laughs> you can't see much on this one um risk okay if you guys are new you've never placed a trade if you don't have that demo account out there you will find that all the at the money contracts for nadex are typically floating around 50 bucks okay particularly with binaries and again i really like this strategy I, it's hard to say if the call spreads and if i i tend to like the i don't know if the knockouts line up, I really like to use those because they have that kind of enabled kind of profit target already in there. And I find that the entry cost is pretty cheap, right? I like call spreads as well, but call spreads don't find as many uh, kind of opportunities because remember when it spikes, you know, when it spikes and when price spikes, it will take out knockout brackets and it'll, it'll reprint new ones in close proximity. If the spike is too big, a lot of times there is not a call spread to play the retracement. So a lot of times you have to fold over into the binaries, but the way the binaries are lined out, the farther you get away from the ATM binary option, the cheaper the, the cost is to get in, right? And the reason why is because it's farther away, it requires more movement and the, the quote likelihood of it moving back again, right? Without some type of a catalyst it is lower, right? But what it does is it pro provides a better risk to reward ratio, okay? Um, and again, you guys can see this, the farther you get away, I mean, this, this example at the top, I mean, you can see where it's highlighted at the top. I mean, where price currently is, the indicative of value is at 3,011, right? It's saying if it gets to 3,013 in the next eight minutes, and again, that's very, very fast amount of time. I just use this to show you, it's only got $3 worth of risk. And as you get closer, you can see that the risk gets more and more and more and more, right? As we get closer, as the probabilities increase, okay? It purely goes back to risk. And here's why. A lot of people will think about this and they'll say, okay, well, you know, I have a small account, right? My rule for me is I'm going to only risk, I don't know, I'm going to risk $50 per trade, right? I want my probabilities to be really, really good, right? Well, what happens is you're starting to stack the odds in your favor. If you're risking 50 to make 50, that's a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio. You need to be right more than 50% of the time, right? And again, the market is irrational. It can whoops all back and forth, but you need to be right more than 50% of the time. As you get a little bit farther away, like let's say this one goes up and you know we're at the $13 worth of risk, right? If at the end of this time frame, right, it, it, it is beyond that, yeah, I risked 13, but I just made what, 87 in the other direction? I made $87 worth of profit. My risk to reward is much, much higher. You don't need to be right 50% of the time for your account to be green. So what it does is it helps you become, uh, not I guess helping is the wrong word, what it does is it's a way for you to manage your risk to lower it down to where you don't have to be right as often for your account to grow in the right direction. What it also does is it gives you the ability to take things off prior to expiration and still have a good risk to reward ratio, right? In this example right now, if I bought this for 13, right? Let's just say it gets to, the, let's just, get, just say the uh, indicative value gets right to the strike contract. How much did I tell you it's gonna be worth it earlier, right? 50 bucks. 
Well, if I risk 13 and I take it off at 50, did I just make more than one or two times the amount of risk I had? The answer is yes, right? Versus going for that one to one. This is extremely beneficial because at the same time, if you said you were gonna risk 50 bucks a trade and it's only costing me $13 per contract, how many contracts can I now buy? Three, four, right? Depending on you know where the price is, you know, with, with you know, with the fee to get in. Now, if it goes beyond where it was, right? Say it goes up and it goes past, instead of me making just 50 bucks per contract, I'm now making 87, but I also had four contracts. Like you guys can do the math. You guys see where I'm going with this one? But the reason why I'm using out of the money these is because again, my cat I I've I've had my catalyst. Fear and greed is in. I'm looking for a retracement. And what I'm doing is I'm using something for low risk because maybe it flatlines on me and I don't want to do a 50-50 risk on that one. Because again, I want to make sure that I stack the odds in my favor as much as I can. The first stacking of odds is the big move in price going more than what it's supposed to do during a specific time frame. Then I match it with the correct expiration and I match it with the correct level of risk. I position size myself correctly as well to get kind of an exponential gain on it. And then again, it's about finding the right market, all right? So risk is the number one reason why, all right? Now, whew, next steps, all right? Everything I just went through, again, I said very, very fast because I'm an East Coaster and I talk quickly, right? I gave you this conception of what a parabolic move is, how to find them, what hours to use them. I gave you what an exponential move looks like, okay? There are additional ways that you can make this better, okay? And again, this is where this kind of comes in a personal preference for me, right? I like to get into my parabolic retracement moves when I find a buying and a selling area. There is umpteen million different probably strategies for reversals that are out there. You may have one already, you may not. Um, I know a lot of people personally in the, in the circle that I trade with, they like to use Fibonacci as well. It's a, it's a really, I mean, you say that just Fibonacci and it's like really, really sexy. It is one reversal strategy that you can use. I have seen it work. I personally think there are better methods out there for my, for my trading personally. And again, you may love it. If you do, great, okay? I like to use what I call supply and demand. I like to find and I like to look on charts for buyers or sellers in the past. Uh, I don't have a crystal ball, but I know what has happened in the past. I know that sellers or, and buyers still exist there because otherwise price would have went past. What I want you guys to do, and again, this is one of those things that occasionally I do give away, giveaways for Nadex because I want you guys to get as much out of these sessions as possible, okay? For the next month, I'm gonna help you guys out here. Again, if, if you're a Fibonacci trader and you have something that works, ignore everything I'm about to tell you. If you don't, if you're looking for a reversal system, I do have one. I put out a newsletter every single week and what I wanna do is I'm gonna give you guys access to it for the next month, okay? One of the sections that I have in there, one of them, you know, something called the curve and I'll explain it in a second here. Let me pull it up, I'll just, I'll just show it to you real quick. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna put it over here. I have a weekly newsletter, it comes out on Sundays, right? What I do is I produce it for the entire week, all right? And one of the sections in there is high quality supply and demand levels. And that's what I use for my reversals, okay? I also combine that with the curve, which basically gives me what my bullish and bearish bias is. If it goes from say the low area you know, on the curve up into a high area where I'm looking for shorts, that's another one of those triggers for me, all right? Um, you guys don't have to pay a single thing for, to, to do this. I just want you guys to be able to have some type of a viable way to figure out how to find reversals, okay? Now, these are done off larger time frames, typically the daily and the four hour, just so you guys are aware of them. You also get a, a Sunday night gap, and again, that kind of goes the same way. If you guys want this, great. If you don't want it, it's no skin off my back. It doesn't matter to me. And again, this is not like a huge value. I mean, it's not like I'm giving you guys like, you know, oh, this is $3,000, but it's not like that, guys. It's You guys can get one month for free. Go there, go to the website. The website is over here, keeptradingsimple.thinkific.com. This is what it looks like. Go up here again, It's I, I charge $10 a month. I charge nothing, but I just want you guys to have some way that you could use a reversal. Like I said, I'm not selling you anything. If you guys want it, use it. If you don't, it's entirely up to you. It's the reversal system that I use for my parabolic retracements, okay? So hopefully that makes sense, all right? It's there, you want it, take it, all right? Let me go back to the other one again and we'll switch over to, uh-oh, where did it go? I lost it, uh, right there. So your next steps would be if you want the reversal system, grab it, take it. Um, if not, again, what I want you guys to do is if you have not enabled your demo, Go across. I don't care if you do it, you know, in the next five minutes or, or, or when we're on our break. 
please go open your demo account. Okay. If you found this presentation today, it means that you know that Natix exists. You know what the website looks like. Literally go in there right now. Go do it right now. Go get your demo account live so you can start trading these. There's a number of news releases the rest of this week that you guys will be able to take advantage of. Um, and, and you know, and like I said, the way that you find that, daily effects, go over here to calendars, go over to economic calendar. It's very simple from the top bar, and you're gonna have all this information. Go to the importance, click off this and this, and you'll be able to see the whole rest of the week. And again, this is for today. You can do the next seven days. These are all the big possible chances for parabolic moves. And again, remember we talked about trading that Germany number? Look, Germany number right here, UK number, US number. And again, these are just the biggest. We're just doing the most important. There are other releases that absolutely, without a doubt, will move the area as well. And there's a ton of them there. You can set notifications. There's a lot of things you can do, but again, the first step starts with having that demo so you're able to actually trade these things. Um, just looking up top, I can tell there's some parabolic moves up top as well. Um, now, with that said, if you do have additional questions for me, whoa, that's weird. I just got a pop-up that says, share your webcam. I'm like, huh, I don't know why that's going there. Um, if you guys wanna see what I look like, you can do that in the mornings. <laughs> Although I do look professional today. I feel like that's a good thing, right? Um, if you have additional questions for me, whoops, you can check the website out. It was there a second ago. Um, again, we do, the, do that broadcast every morning uh, on YouTube. That's actually not listed up here because that is actually on Nadex's YouTube page. Um, I do Twitch. Actually, it says nightly, but we switched that to the morning to the 9.30 a.m. There's a Discord channel. And like Todd said in the beginning, if you had questions for me, I, I did talk very, very fast. I'm sure I confused more than a few people today. Support at KeepTradingSimple.com is the way to get in touch with me. Um, and again, I just want to thank you for joining us. And like I said, if you want to take advantage of that, um, what that website was, uh, I'll put it up real quick and I'm going to look at the questions. Uh, let me see, let me put this back. Um, there's a website right there, keeptradingsimple.thinkific.com. And let me check the questions panel. Um, uh, I actually it. think you're okay. I think we've answered. Oh, did um, you get it? Okay. I lost my you window. Know, we're we're all good. I was so, like, wait, where did this come from? <laughs> Uh, awesome. As always, thank you so much, Brian, for all of that. And yeah, leave that up for a second. I want to make sure people get an opportunity sure. to, uh, take a look at that. And, uh, please, if you're interested, you know, Brian's offering it out, uh, one month free, uh, something that might open your eyes to other potential opportunities in the markets.